Hello, my name is Beth Dixon, and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentations, with this PowerPoint being on sampling with and without replacement. For Mrs. Borlaug, this is a second activity using beads for her class. For us on the video, well, I can't give you virtual beads, as this is not an app it's just a video. But there is some good information on this PowerPoint that I do think is worthwhile, so we will have to pretend for parts of this video. Making yourself a set of beads might also help you with some of the concepts we will cover here. As always, a thank you to Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoints to make these videos. Here are the directions that her class gets. You get a handful of beads and you record the colors and the numbers of beads. You may want to try this at home, making your own beads out of anything you can find, water bottle caps, a paper, uh, actual beads, buttons, whatever. Um, for her class and for her PowerPoint, she pretended that she picked the beads here on the left and she got the colors pink, green, blue, red, black, white, and yellow. And then you record the actual number of beads that you picked. Three pink, five green, ten blue, six red, seven black, four white, and eight yellow. For a total of 43 beads. If you're doing this at home, your sample space does not need to be this large, but you don't want your sample space too small either. And then we're going to answer question number two. One bead is randomly selected and we want to find the following probabilities. First, the probability of being a red. Well, we have six red out of the total of 43 of our beads, so the probability is six out of 43, which is 0.1395. The probability of being blue is 10 out of 43, or 0.2326. The probability of being a red polka dot bead is impossible, and impossible events have a probability of zero. Question three. In this example, I will be picking two beads with replacement. Pretend that I randomly picked a red bead out of your handful and then I put it back. Take the red bead out of your handful and then put it back. Now I'm going to go back and I want you to watch that animation again. You're taking the red bead, taking it out, and then putting it back. One more time because I love how she did the animation. You picked it, but then you put it back in your sample space. This is with replacement. You replaced the bead back into the sample space. What is the probability that the second bead I pick will be red? Notice we're not interested in the two beads together, but just that the second bead will be red. Well, we're looking at our sample space and ready to pick a second bead. What is the chance, <coughs> excuse me, six out of 43, which is 0.1395. In this example, I will be picking two beads without replacement. 
pretend that I randomly picked a red bead out of your handful and then keep it out when I pick the second bead. Take a red bead out of your handful and keep it out. Notice the animation. She picked up a red bead and moved it and it is now out of your sample space there on the left. We now have how many red beads? We no longer have six red beads, we have five red beads. And our total also decreases by one to a total of 42. Write a sentence explaining what taking out a red bead does to the numbers in your table. Well, the number of red beads decreased by one and the total decreased by one. What is the probability that the second bead I pick will be red? Well, again, we're just looking at picking a red bead now that I've picked the first red bead. Just one red bead. Well, we only have five out of 42. That gives us 0 0.1190. Question number five. Explain why the answers in number three and number four are different. Recall that number three was picking two beads with replacement and our answer was 6 out of 43 or 0.1395 and question number 4 was to pick two beads without replacement and the probability of the second bead given that the first was red was 5 out of 42 which is equal to 0 0.1190. Why are they different? Well, they are different because question number three was with replacement and question number four was without replacement. Question number three with replacement, the sample space remained the same and question number four, we changed the sample space. Here are some additional problems for you to try. Feel free to pause the video as you need to to work these problems. Thank you for watching this video on sampling with and without replacement. I have other videos on probability that may be of some help to you as well. And as always, Walter State students are welcome to stop by and see me in the Math Lab in room 222 of the Math and Behavioral Social Science Building.